coming in uh, right along the lake shore, but nothing that's going to trigger rain chances for Here it is. The news like about the coronavirus. That's right. The news about the coronavirus. And that's going to be largely late in the day as we see a weak frontal boundary approaching. Don't get caught up on temperatures because those are not going to change very much. What it's going to do is serve as a little bit of a focal point for some of those late day showers and thunderstorms. And we're going to see a little bit of an unsettled pattern right on through the weekend. Uh, so rain chances are actually going to help get temperatures a little bit as we move into the end of the week. But uh, with this frontal boundary on Thursday, there's a possibility it could kickstart a couple of stronger thunderstorms. So the possibility does exist for an isolated severe thunderstorm warning or two across northeast Ohio. We are under a marginal risk already for the chance for severe weather on Thursday. As far as Lake Erie goes, water temperatures in the 70s. We'll see light winds today out of the south, southeast, 5 to 10 knots. One is two foot waves. So overall, a pretty quiet setup on the water. Same goes into tomorrow. It's Thursday, we'll look to be a little bit more unsettled as we kickstart more in the way of shower and potentially thunderstorm activity through the early evening. Then Friday afternoon, we're going to pick up with those chances for showers and storms once again. Very similar pattern as we head into the weekend. And for the weekend, notice that change in our temperatures. We're going from the 80s back down into the low, even mid-90s. Uh, looking for a high of 93 coming up on Sunday, keeping those 90s in the mix as we head into early next week. Here it now is. Get a check in score, track, the the news about the coronavirus. That's right. The news about the coronavirus. Butler County could be the next to qualify as a level four, the most severe level in the state's new health advisory system for coronavirus. Butler County currently sits at level three. Several local business owners and residents say they're taking every precaution they can to prevent their county from going from red to purple. The owner of High Street Cafe in downtown Hamilton tells us it's been a struggle to keep their once bustling business going in this difficult economic time. The owner says they are continuing to push through while also helping their customers stay safe by offering things like free masks and hand sanitizer. For now, they're only offering carryout and catering, which still keeps plenty of customers rolling in. However, the owner says their day-to-day -day business is still nothing like it was before the pandemic. I used to see the 100 people inside this restaurant upstairs and downstairs. Uh, unfortunately, now with the social distancing, the spacing, trying to keep everybody at a minimum distance at six feet, uh, we had to eliminate all of our uh, all of our dining. If Butler County does indeed reach level four, the governor's office says rules in Butler County would change to encourage residents to stay home, except for essential activities. Columbus is replacing several hundred parking meters in the popular short north area with new kiosks. The old parking meters have been in place for several years and require more maintenance than new kiosks. Those kiosks are already in place along Nationwide Boulevard in Columbus's Arena District. Work begins this week to replace the individual parking meters with the new kiosks around the Dale Park. Columbus's Parking Enforcement Office says one kiosk can serve several dozen spaces. As many as 400 more meters are scheduled to be replaced with the kiosks in three other parts of downtown by the end of the summer. Still ahead, we take a closer look at the wealth disparities our state is facing. But first, we continue to hear from activist leaders and community members about what's brought them to action and how we need to continue addressing racial discrimination in order to create a better world for everyone. Here's today's Voices for Change. Thank you. 
along, two other parents got together as part of the Northeast Ohio Black Health Coalition and decided that we would um, take food to children who were disabled or disabled caregivers. And that the food isn't made for them to get to the food, that the food gets to them. Um, we have 39, 39,000 students in our municipal school district. And we have fed less than 10% during the era of COVID. Um, and that is the reason. When you see the cars that line up here on the street to come in and get the food, that's the great thing about us as Americans, that we're willing to help out people who are in need. There are black folks, there are white folks, taking food to folks who need it. You know, they didn't say, well, I only want to take the white family. They're, they're saying, you know what, this is a need and I'm willing to help you meet it. There you have it, the news about the coronavirus. That's right, the news about the coronavirus. There you have it, the news about the coronavirus. That's right, the news about the coronavirus. 